Hello, good morning, everyone. So, um, well, my name is Oriol. I'm a solutions engineer at Summer Technologies. Uh, with me, I have Kevin Guerrero. He's a technical marketing uh, specialist at Murata. And today, we will showcase you a bit of the power distribution and immersion work stream. Oops, sorry. This is not on. And now, apologies. Yeah. So, what is the power distribution and immersion work stream? Um, so all what we are trying to tackle in this work stream is how to distribute the power with the open rack versions that are coming up in the industry. Um, as you may know, the vertical racks, open racks, uh, are having a lot of power related with the bus bar, with the connectors, a lot of density. It's something that is very differentiated in OCP comparing to traditional uh, 18, 19 inch uh, hardware servers. So uh, the type of free people that is joining this group and that we are discussing, it's more about power, efficiency, voltage, uh, and as I say, distribution, and now even considering immersion in in this work stream. So basically what we are typically speaking is more about the power delivery implementations, uh, immersion cooling strategies, limitations that we can find as well when we speak uh, of different fluids as well, power delivery proposals, uh, safety, uh, mechanical adaptations. Uh, as you may know and you will see here, uh, it's very different to stack things vertically on an air rack rather than horizontally in an immersion rack. So of course there is a lot of adaptations and things that we need to consider to deliver that. Um, so, we also create schemas, diagrams, we open speak like this with the community, we come up with different ideas and solutions, and that's what we are uh, coming up recently. So, um, at the moment we try to let's say, uh, separate the group in, in four towers, four principles, which are the rack tank spec. So there is people working more in what should be the tank specification, the rack specification to fit open rack version three now, IT hardware, power shelves inside there. Then we have the part of the power providers, the power shelves, the PSUs, the BBUs, the voltages, what needs to be considered in immersion in regards to that. Um, then we have the bus bar providers, the density of those bus bars, how they are placed in the tank, how they are efficiently connected, which are the limitations, amperage. And then we have, last but not least, the IT hardware providers, which are also engaging to manufacture or design these PDBs, these power distribution boards inside the servers, which are very key to transform from 48, 54 volts to 12, or after even though to 3, 5 for the inside uh, motherboard. So, um, we will see uh, the material compatibility part for the bus bars, the temperatures and the densities and redundancy. Um, as you may know, for example, on a vertical rack, we can find uh, a single central bus bar or we can have setups of three bus bars where we can find more density or redundancy. Um, on the power shelf, you will see the adaptations that we are considering for immersion. One of the most important parts, for example, is the uh, connectivity that is always in the surface of the tank, so we don't have any capillarity going through the cables or any immersive cables which are not necessarily needed at the bottom of an immersion tank. Um, then we also have testing, speaking about the connectors uh, for the different power shelves and servers which are connecting to the bus bar, temperatures, densities that they can handle as well. And then we'll also speak about the voltage efficiency, which Kevin is uh, very specialized on that, and he can uh, speak about us about the, the different uh, and efficiency about this. So, this, for example, here is uh, an example of uh, the bus bar emplacement for a 100 kilowatts option. So here we will find the tank, which is a 100 kilowatts tank, and in the center, uh, a bus bar, which is, the, well, it, the laser is not very visible, sorry, but you can see here how the bus bar is uh, going from the end to the extreme, and the attachments that are going into the center of the tank at the bottom of the tank. The bus bar is placed in the center because that's how it was initially defined, but we can see also the setup where we can find three bus bars, one at each uh, extreme as well, so we can have eventually in the future tanks of 200, 300 kilowatts depending on the cooling densities and requirements in the market. Here you can see it in a bit more of the detail. Uh, so here in the right we see how we defined in a tank the positive and negative. So if we have a vertical rack and we just turn it horizontally, we will have the positive at the back and the negative in the front. And uh, then we will see how we are connecting everything inside, right? So we have the stoppers in the laterals, which are a very important element. So there is no weight of any server, power shelf, or any element that is relying in the bus bar. So it's having all of its weight inside the bus bar. But 
on the corners, so there is uh, this stopper is meant for that. Um, then we have, of course, the three bus bars, as you can see here, as a possible uh, layout. Um, and in the center, this one, this power shelf connected, which is providing the, the power. Um, this is a just a vertical view, so you can see it a bit more how that will be looking, but the power shelf will be typically placed in the center, so the uh, current is always going towards equally at the left and at the right of the tank, so the servers will be just connected at the left and at the right. Um, what you can see just here is the CDU. This is a cooling distribution unit that is, in this case, it's just inside the tank, not, not outside, but um, the most important part is that you see here also the connector, it's at the surface of the tank, so it's not under, there is no cables going from the bottom to the top, and also uh, that they are a bit elevated from the surface level of the fluid, so the connection will never be inside the fluid. There will not be any capillarity issues going outside uh, from the tank. Um, this is a layout that it will just represent how what I'm saying will, will look like. So this is a 100 kilowatt tank, for example, where we have the CDU, we have, sorry, the power shelf here. Um, then we have the servers connected, the bus bars in the bottom, as we were seeing in the previous image, and the servers. So basically, here you have a layout about how that will look. This is having 99 nodes of compute with one kilowatt each. Then we have a couple of power shelves here, which each of them is providing 54 kilowatts. Um, and all of this together is a tank of 100 kilowatts of compute in immersion, following Open Rack version 3, having no power cords because it's following the power shelf connectivity, um, making an easiness for for OCP and for immersion tanks because OCP respects the depth of the elements uh, for IT of 800 millimeters, so the tanks can have always the same distance, vertically speaking, uh, to the bottom of the tank, so you can have the power shelf, the servers, everything meant from the same size with no suffering comparing to a traditional 19-inch IT hardware server that each manufacturer can do on a different length, on a different density. Um, what else to say? Uh, also, it's good as a consider consideration for the immersion tanks that OCP is not using screws, is not using any elements that can fall at the bottom of the tank that can cause an issue, that can cause something that you need to rescue from the bottom of the tank. The OCP elements are following the rails in the lateral, so you just need to insert the power shelf or the server with the crane vertically, just let it stop on the, on the um, stoppers that we have seen before on the laterals of the tank but you don't need to be screwing anything in on there, so it's very easy to operate. And with that, I will hand over to Kevin, but just to uh, say a bit more, this here, this is a power shelf for immersion. Um, at the laterals, we can see, as I was commenting, these stoppers, which will be stopping at the lateral of the tank, so the connectors in the center are not having all of the weight of the power shelf itself. And then we can see here the connection to the, the AC to DC connection, sorry, that it's up here, so the cables will reach here, but they will not be at the fluid level, which is at this line I'm marking here, so there will not be any capillarity affecting the cables, so there will not be any fluid getting out of the tank, creating any type of risk. As I was commenting, this is a 54 kilowatts power shelf, so for a tank of 100 kilowatt, with a couple of these, you could have, uh, as I've shown in the previous slide, all of the rest for the compute. And with that, I will hand over to Kevin, who will go over more the concrete elements of the power part. Thank you, Oriel. Sure. So we've been working with uh, Submer uh, to work on this, and uh, boy, immersion is, is really taking off, and we're learning a lot as we move. We're power guys, so we had to learn a little bit. Uh, the main ed objective, like Oriel said, the main thing was bringing the AC in above the fluid. Why? Again, he said, the capillary action. You know, otherwise you drain the tank. So we don't want to do that. Now, you can do it other ways, but this way makes it simple. Uh, so if we require that, now the cords are very simple coming in. And they're always coming in at the top. So that's the biggest difference between uh, immersion power shelf and uh, air power shelf in OCP. The air power shelf's got the AC coming in the back, the DC coming out the back, but we don't want to bring that cable down in the bottom of the shelf. What we're trying to do with our specification is make it as open as possible. We're not trying to 
put ourselves in a box. We want to allow the power vendors to be as creative as possible. We want to allow the power vendors, if you're going to put a 5.5 kilowatt power supply in there, that's fine. If you're going to put a 3.6 kilowatt power supply, that's fine. You can put a 3 kilowatt power supply, that's fine. Obviously, the, the idea here is to get the density up. And what we have here uh, that Oriel showed you is the, uh, each one of these power supplies is 3.6 kilowatts. Uh, it is actually very similar power supply that is used in air. Uh, what we have done, and I'll be honest, is we're taking the fans out and then we change the firmware so it'll operate in. Now, we had to make sure the compatibility inside is there, which it is. Uh, it's got the same power connector on the back. Obviously, we have to have a, a couple power connectors to take that much power out of here. Uh, and when we move to a 5.5 kilowatt power supply, we're gonna have to change those connectors again. As long as it's a connector that's ORV3, that's fine and you can use multiple connectors because we're going to need to do that in order to get this kind of power uh, into the bus bar. Uh, again, as Oriel mentioned, and, and we'll point it out again, it's important to make sure that we don't use that connector as a, 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 to hold the weight of the power shelf, and we're not doing that. You can see here. Oop, wrong way. glasses that aren't letting me see. All right, so the mechanical outline, we're gonna try to keep that as simple as possible. It has to fit into the tank. It has to go down into the bottom of the tank. So that's simple. That's the same thing as in a power shelf in air. So we're gonna, we're gonna define that. We're gonna define where the connector is. Now, you can put one of the connectors in any one of those three slots, as Oriel mentioned. So it's, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The connector, it's the same connector. Now, one of the interesting things is we've had our, our friends uh, utilize these connectors. Uh, the connector guys have done some testing for us. And they put them in fluid, and then they look at the thermal rise. Now, what we want to know is where is that thermal rise compared to what you get in there? Now, what we found out, in Amphenol did some testing for us in fluid, we found out you can put about twice the current through the bus bar and through the connectors, which is pretty cool. I mean, that's the whole approach here, right? To get the density up. So if you have a 50 kilowatt bus bar, you now have a 100 kilowatt bus bar in immersion. And that's the key to this whole thing. And so again and again, we did this testing. And, and we came up with the same answers. Molex did some similar testing for us with their connectors. And, their, and what do you think they found? The same thing. It's about twice the power we can get through that connector. And that's a big deal because that's the limiting factor when you start doing this, when you start working on power. I mean, I could put more power into that bus bar with you know, stacking up power shelves and it works but I can only put so much power in that connector. Now, what's interesting is Molex also used a different type of connector, not an o or OCP connector, and they did a similar test. They found the same thing, guys. They found that you can get about twice the power through in fluid as you can get air. So I guess that's the point here. Uh, when you put product inside fluid, you can get about twice the power and normally. Now, one of the things that we have uh, are taking a look at is what we can do with the power shelf, how much more power. Now, it's not gonna be twice. Uh, so far, our testings indicate that it's gonna be about 1.3, 1.4 times. But every power shelf, every power supply is a little different. So that's one of the things we're gonna be doing. We're gonna have to be testing that product. And, verifying what's the temperature rise on the hot spots in the power supply versus air versus fluid. So we can understand, can I get 1.4 times, 1.3 times, and then can I do it safely? And does it stay there? So that's one of the things that the power 
uh, industry is going to have to do. We're going to have to do some uh, some testing. We're going to have to do some uh, check boxes and figure out where we can be. And quite frankly, that's a it's a safety issue, right? You you don't want to get too high. You don't want to have it run away. Now the nice thing about fluid is when it gets hot, it rises to the top. So the cooler fluid comes back up with it. So it, it works pretty well for us. We build product in air. Putting it in fluid is not that much different. Now, we're learning as we go along. And as the, the server people have already learned a lot of the things, how to cool these things better. Uh, and we're trying to figure out uh, if we can do that much better. Maybe we can make it 1.4 times, but that's what the connector guys have, have done now, and they're working with us. But we are still pushing those connectors right to the edge, uh, and, and the bus bar as well. So we think today we've already been working with some of the guys that have given us a, a 50 kilowatt bus bar, so that's really 100 kilowatts in immersion. So I think we'll be okay. And the bus bar, the connectors, they all do about the same thing. Uh, it's interesting how that works. So we're pretty happy about that. So what we need from everybody is help here. Uh, one of the things that we have not gotten into too much, and we don't have a lot of details, is the safety, okay? Uh, yes, we know how to do a, a power supply it, through air and get the UL approval, you get European approval, but are there anything that we need to do and worry about in immersion? Now, obviously, we have all the issues that you've heard in the other uh, times, but pretty much that's it. So if anybody can help us, we'd appreciate that. If there's some folks from the agencies, please let us know. Thank you very much.